few months ago, I went to Russia to the city of Kazan, the capital of the Republic of Tatarstan, where the element ruthenium was discovered. And sadly, Brady wasn't with me, but it was really good. I went to visit the place where Klaus discovered the element. He built a chemistry lab, which is now a museum, so there's quite a lot of old equipment and stuff inside. There was still quite a lot of snow about, and we arrived, went up the steps, and of course we were wearing thick coats, so we had to take off our coats and things, and then we were ushered into the lecture theatre which Klaus had built. Not a very big lecture theatre, and to my surprise there was a TV crew there waiting to interview me. <laughs> so lots of periodic video cards were dished out, and I gave a short interview. Can't remember what I said. I don't think it was very profound. And then I was greeted by a professor who spoke some English, but not terribly fast, who told me about Klaus. And Klaus originally was a pharmacist making drugs, medicines. And then he moved to Kazan as professor of chemistry and this was his lecture theater, and in pride of place is his portrait. There's quite a nice marble-topped bench, and behind an old-fashioned blackboard, on which I actually wrote, rather naughtily, periodicvideos.com, just so that the students or other visitors might watch it. Do you write it in permanent marker? Unfortunately, just in chalk. This department was famous for a whole series of professors who came after Klaus, and one of them was a chemist called Zinian, who was the first person to make synthetic aniline, synthesized aniline from simpler molecules. And there was a terrific bust of him made of marble with very long moustache. I think it must have been a bit dangerous with Bunsen burners and so on, could have set himself on fire. And then we went through into an antechamber and then into a really old lab which had fume cupboards that had no fans because electric motors hadn't been invented, but instead had a stove underneath and the draught from the hot air going up the chimney flue was enough to cause some suction. And that was really nice. And there were pestles and mortars and all sorts of old equipment. But the really exciting thing was to go in where there was a display case with rows and rows of samples, new compounds, new elements that had been made by all the different professors. And including those were three samples of oxide, chloride, and ruthenium metal itself, which had all been made by Klaus. Apparently, he noticed the presence of this element when he was purifying some ore from platinum. And ruthenium oxide is quite volatile and has a very distinctive smell. And he actually smelt the element before he discovered it, which is quite an interesting take on how you discover elements. That's amazing. He smelt, he smelt something was different. Yes. There was also in this cupboard there was the first sample of aniline, which aniline is a very pale, palish yellow liquid, but it's gone off in the 140 years since then. So it's now a much darker color, but it still looked quite impressive, Zinian's original sample. It was a lovely cupboard, and I could have spent hours looking at different samples. And if you'd been there, we could have made a whole series of videos but probably I didn't know enough about the compounds to do all of them. And then I was taken to sit at the desk of one of the professors. I don't know whether it was Klaus's original desk or had been put there just afterwards, but it felt really good to sit there to hold the pen and be a Russian professor. <laughs>